$13,000 for catalytic converters on a Maserati Quattroporte. Let's get started. Before we dive into this craziness, let's head on over to the XKR. We have an update. So it's alive again. We got the new fuel pumps installed. Everything went well. And when we got it all back together, new fuel, fresh fuel, we took the old fuel out because it was actually starting to discolor. It started right up, just as I predicted would happen. There's no ignition issues. There's no security issues going on with the car. It just wanted some fuel. It said, please, give me some fuel. And the fuel pump said, hell no, you're not getting any. So that's all that was wrong with as far as it's running. We're still waiting on a good used cluster to figure out the 440,000 miles messed up cluster that's on this thing. So just an update on the XKR. Let's head on back to the Maserati. So Mrs. Wizard informs me there was smoke coming out of the back of the car on the XKR when I just started it. That does not surprise me because like I said, it's been sitting for almost three years. So those cats have dust and dirt and who knows and maybe some oil in the top of the cylinders. It's going to need to go out and run and do a few road tests and kind of clear its throat, so to speak. So that makes sense. I totally get that. Now back to the Maserati. This Quattroporte came in for a check engine light, some front end clunk, and just kind of a check over. And just like it was on the GMC Sierra we just worked on, what started out as two or three complaints turned into quite a large bill. We'll show some parts here in a minute of things we're replacing. You can see the wheels are off because we have quite a lot apart on the front end. This is a 2007 Maserati Quattroporte with an automatic, which means it's an Automatica model. It is not the F1 or Duo Select transmission. I apologize for the noise you're hearing in the background. That's our heater. It's kind of cold in here today and the heater is kind of noisy, so not much I can do about it. This one's in pretty good shape. It's not showroom condition, but it's not bad either. It's actually very nice. So let's go ahead and take a look around it and under the hood. There's the beautiful front end of this Maserati and it's almost as beautiful as the Jaguar I just bought on the front end. These are probably some of my favorite cars as far as the styling and design. It really, really looks cool. As we go down the side, you can see the wheels are off and on the ground. They're in very good shape. Nice Maserati wheels. They look really good on this car. The wheels are typically found on executive models of the Quattroporte, and you can see it does say that on the pillar. It says executive GT. It's more of a luxury model and, and a little less sporty on the inside. You can see the taillights have had some sort of a, a coating or something put on them to make it almost the same color as the car. It's a nice color. It's like a dark gray. What would you call it? Gunmetal? I'd go with gunmetal. But on this side as well, everything's nice. No dents, no serious scratches or anything. So let's go ahead and hop under the hood. I'll go ahead and put my little tool that holds up the hood struts so we don't have the hood fall on me. There we go. That's on our Amazon affiliates link in the description below if you want to buy one of those. So people say they just use a vice grip. Why do you need to buy a tool? Only a fool would do that because while you're working under here, you could bump the handle of it and it'll just literally fall on you. Or number two, which is even worse, is that I've seen vice grip handles rub across the fender here and just scrape the paint right down to the bare metal. That is so expensive. That means this whole fender will have to be replaced because you didn't want to buy a little tool that costs like 10 bucks. So here we are under the hood. This is our Maserati V8. You can see with the blue valve covers, it is the Automatica model. If they were red, they would be the F1 or the Dual Select transmission. This is a 4.2 V8, and it doesn't seem like a very big engine, but it actually has really good power, almost 400 horsepower, but it's at really high RPMs. Down low, these engines are not powerful. They don't have low grunt, like an LS2 or something. But they are a really cool engine. They sound amazing. They sound better than your Mustang. They sound better than your Camaro. Way, way better. One thing that's really interesting about this car is the engine sits behind the front wheels. 
You can see this strut bar that goes across the engine bay here. Most cars, the engine is all the way up here, but this one's all the way back here. It actually, it's almost like mid-engine. It's not truly a mid-engine car, but that really helps with weight distribution when you're driving, the characteristics of the car. You can see the wheel, the center of the wheel, is about lined up with this strut bar I just mentioned, which means it truly does sit behind the front wheels. There is something we're doing to this engine, but nothing up here on top. We'll show it to you here when we get it up in the air. So we're going to skip the interior today. The customer left a lot of their personal items in the car and we probably don't need to have those on the camera. It's none of our business really. So let's head on into why is this thing apart? What did we do to the engine? Let's go ahead and get this thing up in the air. So on the outside, it looks like we're doing a similar job to the Sierra we just worked on, but it actually has nothing to do with anything that we're doing with the Sierra. Uh, one thing we have off the front of the engine is the main pulley, or the harmonic balancer, because of a front main seal leak. We'll show you that, but this is the pulley that's been pulled off. So here we are under the radiator core support, and everything looks nice and dry, nothing leaking there. Here's our cooling fans and whatnot. And there's this cross member here. We're still not to the engine. Normally the oil pan's right about in here, the rear of the oil pan on an engine, right around in here. But again, the engine sits so far back on these. We're already to the wheels before we even get to the front of the engine, which is kind of cool. Here's our front main seal that's leaking. You can see a little bit of shininess around the lip of the seal. When it's running, it'll actually just dribble down the side of that timing cover. We've cleaned it off since then, but that definitely needed to be replaced. It's just going to get worse. But that is the front of the 4.2 Maserati. Here's our oil pan. Everything's nice and dry. Here's the bell housing. Everything's nice and dry there as well. We'll go ahead and take a look at the brakes. We do have a lot of stuff apart. Like I mentioned, we have the upper control arms off and the struts out. The brakes still have like 60-70% remaining on them. I really can't check much else right now. We'll go to the other side. Brakes are the same. And again, it's all apart. Oh, there's the motor mounts. Look, Mrs. Wizard, there's boobies. Oh, there's stop, two. Stop poking the Maserati. There's two of them. <sighs> Anyways, here's our catalytic converters. And there is a check engine light for thermostat and PO420, which is catalytic converter failure. It does also have other code chain. Both sides are, are failing. We did put a new thermostat in that'll take care of that portion of the code. But like I said, these things are super, super expensive. Here's our transmission, which is a ZF transmission. It's nice and dry. There's another mount with a booby on it. This thing has three boobies. Here's our resonator chamber. Here's a drive shaft. Everything's nice and tight there. Here's our differential. You can see there's a tiny bit of seepage that's happened over the years. Obviously, there's nothing dripping. That is nothing to worry about. That will be something I would monitor. You'll probably never see it get any worse than that for a long time. That is not worth a major expensive teardown at all. It's not even worth it. Check our CV boots. This one's good. That one's good. Sway bar link is good. The strut is nice and dry. Our ride height sensor is all connected and doing well. Over here, same thing. You can feel the brakes in here. Brakes feel good. Sway bar link is good. CV boot is good, both inboard and outboard. The strut is nice and dry. Here's our exhaust coming out the back, and everything looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look at our tires. 50th week of 2018, They're about five years old. They're still in good shape. They probably got a little bit of life left in them, but soon it'll be time for tires. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So we checked into the clunking front end and 
what we initially found out was that these little ball, they look like a ball joint basically at the front of the, the front struts. This is very common on Ferraris as well, but there's just a tiny bit of play you can see there. These are like a swivel ball, but th this is not swiveling, this is up and down movement. There is no really a rubber bushing or anything between this and the lower control arm. So when these have a little bit of play in them, you go over railroad tracks or anything and it just amplifies, it moves back and forth in that socket and it's just like clunk, 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 clunk. it's so loud. So we knew that had to be replaced, that would take care of the clunking. But as always happens, we get everything apart and we're like, oh my goodness, this needs even more. Let's take a look at this control arm here. Danielson was working on this because he likes the Ferrari Maserati cars a lot. He took the center bolt out of this and pulled the control arm out and literally these just fell out. The rubber is so disintegrated. That will cause a little bit of clunking, but really what that'll do is wear the tires unevenly more than anything. So these things are so expensive. When you buy these bushings, they come as a set and they're $400 for a set per side. The nice thing is I don't have to replace the entire strut. I went ahead and ordered these spring insulators. This is also can cause some noise. You can see it's literally just crumbling. I can just crumble it right here into pieces. We'll get new insulators and you can also just replace this bushing. You don't have to replace the whole strut. So that saves a lot of money there. We're gonna have a lot of money just in the front end to fix clunks and some bushings. And that goes along with Maserati pricing. It's so expensive to get parts for these things. So there's our front end clunk. Our thermostat issue's been solved. We'll take care of this front main seal. And that pretty much solves everything the customer had complaints with. Maseratis are definitely one of those cars that if you're not swimming in money, but you want to buy a car that makes it look like you're swimming in money, it's going to show you really fast you're not swimming in money because the parts on these cars are more than a Mercedes, double a BMW, double a Land Rover. They are so expensive on the parts. I talked to Daniel Sun and he said sometimes at the dealership or some other shops he's worked at, they get Maseratis in. And it never surprised even the shop owners at those places that they would achieve Ferrari level pricing on Maseratis every single time. It's just as expensive as owning a Ferrari. It really is. But there is a car that's worse and even more expensive than a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce. And that is an Aston Martin. There are things on there, 20 grand for this, 15 grand for that, 30 grand for this. Everything is so expensive on an Aston Martin. But definitely these cars are not a budget car. If you think, I'll find one that's a hoopty and I'll fix it up. No, you won't. I've been through this many times with people with these Quattroportes. They buy them that are beat up. They get a few estimates on repairs and they're like, yeah, I think I'm going to dump this car. I'm not going any further. And that's had that happen probably 10 times. So many times people wonder how or why mechanics own some of these super expensive cars if they preach so diligently not to buy them. And the reason why is because us as mechanics or shop owners can afford to get the repairs done as far as labor for free. So yes, we still pay the high prices on the parts, but with no labor, it equates to about the same as having a Honda. So it's, it's doable that way. And if you yourself are a mechanic, you can fix your own cars, then it is feasible that you could fix up one of these cars. But if you're paying a shop to do everything, then no, it is not. Now, the catalytic converter's on here. We did tell the customer about it. We're still waiting to hear back what they're gonna do with that. Very likely they won't do them. I don't blame them. Catalytic converters on cars are already skyrocketing because of the catalytic converter theft that's going on all over the nation. It's not just in a certain state here or there, it's all over. They're on back order for months, sometimes years on some models of cars because so many have been stolen. And then you take a car like this where there was very few made and you need catalytic converters for it. They are going to do highway robbery on you, they will. It is so high. No, they cannot be rebuilt either. What's so expensive is the materials inside of it and also the design that goes into it. This is kind of part of the manifold and everything. It's all kind of a sweeping piece that goes all the way back. Five to six grand per side that doesn't include the labor. My supplier informed me of the prices of the cats and he says, I'll tell you how much they cost. He says, but I'll also tell you we don't sell many of them because nobody ever wants to do that. And I was like, yeah, I get it. It's too expensive. 
And no, we're not going to gut the cats for the customer or do something crazy like that. It is illegal. We don't do that here in this shop. It's possible you could find some used catalytic converters. They're still going to be two grand or something. And then what if you install them and drive it for a month or two and the same code comes back because they too were failing. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to put used ones on. So that's kind of just where it is. So we haven't really torn this whole car apart and we're already thousands of dollars. Can you imagine guys, if we were fixing the front end, all the other work we've done and the cats together all in one lump thing, we would exceed $20,000 on this car. So you see that five, $10,000 Maserati on Facebook Marketplace, don't do it. It'll take 15 or 20 grand to get it right. You could spend that much money to buy one that is already nice. So most people don't fix these cars up. They're really not a car that you can buy as a hoopty and fix up. I don't see that happening. In fact, what I do see happening is abandonment over and over of the projects. They're like, oh, I'm putting this through auction or I'm getting rid of it or something like that. So, but this is a nice car. It is in good shape. We will fix the things that the customer wants addressed and it will continue to be a very nice car. This one's not a hoopty. This one's very nice. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, it's just like the little hood strut tool I just showed you, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. We really do appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's a whole new week of more cars all next week, which means tons more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.